Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. What was I just saying quite literally yesterday? Well, a bunch of stuff. But the one thing that I had in my mind in particular <laughs> is um, I covered a piece about uh, BACT and how their physically settled Bitcoin futures contracts are beginning. I think the date was September 23rd, which is a big deal. And I made the point that I said, hey, uh, Bitcoin's not going to be the only cryptocurrency in futures contracts. Don't be surprised if XRP ends up being one of them as well. Uh, ends up being one of those, uh, specifically the backed. I won't be surprised if they do it and if others get approved. Uh, you expect futures contracts for other cryptocurrencies is what I was saying quite literally yesterday. And while we don't have words specifically that there will be XRP futures, uh, it's early days, boys and girls. I believe it's coming. But the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because today there's a brand new article titled Not Just Bitcoin. Backed is considering additional crypto futures contracts. Did I did I say it was going to happen? I did I not. Okay, it's, it's just funny. It's one day later there's a piece on this. So I'm going to cover that because uh, I think it's going to be good for XRP. I think that it's going to be coming. You're talking about a coin that is third in market cap in the crypto asset class. Uh, I also want to share with you there's an XRP community member who uh, is thinking about writing a book about XRP. So I thought I'd go ahead and put the spotlight on this. I'll share with you a tweet from him. And also I've got a piece having to do with Argentina. Uh, yeah, the Argentina, Argentinian pesos not exactly having a, a good week. You know, it's not having a good time right now. And so there's this article that has to do with uh, the utilization of Bitcoin as a hedge uh, in, in times of, uh, of just basically global turmoil. So I'll cover a little bit of that portion of it. I'm just going to cover select parts of it. But I have a broader point to make about XRP and why Ripple's uh, technology, especially the utilization of a blend of X current and X rapid by banks and financial institutions, is a good idea, especially as it refers to that article, which I will be covering here very shortly. Now, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambeau channel. It's the best thing you will do with your day. All right, let's jump into this content. It's about Bact. It's about futures contracts. Bact's recent announcement that it's finally ready to launch its physically backed Bitcoin futures triggered a burst of requests on Twitter asking for altcoins to be added to the platform. And, uh, and then they got a screen capture of uh, the tweet from Bact here from, from yesterday. It says, we have some, uh, some news. And then there's a... You know, I'm not going to cover it, but there's a link to their Medium blog here. Anyway, it turns out Bact has already confirmed that it is interested in supporting additional crypto assets aside from Bitcoin. The company first put out the word in November that it plans to gather feedback from customers and the crypto community to see which contracts it should add next. And here's a quote. Bitcoin today accounts for over half of total crypto market capitalization and has been deemed to be a commodity, and its derivatives are regulated in the United States by the CFTC. As the world's most liquid and widely distributed cryptocurrency, and uh, where we've seen the most customer demand, Bitcoin's profile creates a liquid product on which to build a futures contract. We'll consider additional contracts as the landscape evolves, and as we receive additional customer feedback about what they want. Backed says inquiries can be sent to info at backed.com. So if you're interested, apparently they're welcoming communication. So I'm not telling you to do that or not to do that, but it looks to me like they're welcoming communication on that and they want some feedback. <laughs> so you can consider that anyway. Uh, I still think until there's more regulatory clarity, I don't think you're going to see uh, XRP futures contract necessarily anytime soon, but uh, I think that it's going to happen in the future. I just, I'm going to call it right now. I will make that prediction. I don't do price predictions. I don't like to put a timestamp on it, but I'll make this prediction without a timestamp. There will be XRP futures contracts. I think that it's coming here. And here's the reason that that matters. If it's a futures contract, if it's physically settled, as is this new one with backed, that means that in order for this, this to actually take place, the speculation to occur, you have to take additional XRP out of the ecosystem. XRP that could be used specifically for utility, it can be used for this as well. It's perfectly fine. Just like I bought XRP and it's for speculation, this is a new way in which it can be used for speculation. Perfectly fine. It's part of the ecosystem. I like it. I'm very cool with it. 
So if, if this happens, you know what it does to supply and demand. Because even if this is uh, bought and then it ends up being held uh, and it's a result of over-the-counter transactions, which means the XRP is not uh, being purchased on cryptocurrencies exchanges, which means it's not going to affect the market rate, it does affect supply and demand. So in that way, it actually does ultimately, it, it, yes, indirectly, albeit indirectly, it does affect the price of XRP ultimately. And that matters. So as if it's to happen on a large scale, you can just imagine that's just one more thing. It's one more piece of the puzzle. It's one thing that you should be aware of moving forward. <clears throat> I think this is going to happen here. And, and of course, people are going to have confidence in, uh, in believing that it's reasonable to do so as the utility is more. And so that's, can you start to see like how this ecosystem is playing out? As there's utilization of XRP, there will be more people and entities, institutional and otherwise, willing to invest, willing to speculate. And that that's, you'll, you'll just see, this is the beginning of the fleshing out of a nascent asset class, brand new asset class. Very cool stuff here. Then the piece continues. The launch date for Bax Bitcoin futures is set for September 23rd. The company says it has received approval to run its crypto custody warehouse from New York's Department of Financial Services. And here's a quote. Our contracts have already received the green light from the CFTC through the self-certification process and user acceptance testing has begun. With approval by the New York State Department of Financial Services to create backed trust company, a qualified custodian, the backed warehouse will custody Bitcoin for physically delivered futures. And again, that's a key part, physically delivered in this case. And that's the first time ever, by the way. Uh, this offers customers unprecedented regulatory clarity and security alongside a regulated, globally accessible exchange in a market underserved by institutional-grade infrastructure. Uh, the futures will be cleared through ICE US, which is regulated by the United States Commodities Futures Trading Commission. And that last part of that quote that they said, look at that again underserved by institutional grade infrastructure these are smart people you know this is part of ice this is backed uh they they recognize an opportunity here man they are seizing it and they're not going to be the only ones the crypto asset class is here to stay people do want it those cryptocurrencies with utility will win the day i don't care about the short-term price action i couldn't be more bullish on xrp uh, not financial advice but i believe that it's going to be uh worth a lot more in the future than it is today that's what i believe all right, check out this tweet from Ken Melendez, who I just started following a couple of days ago because I liked a couple of his tweets and I shared them on this channel. Well, check this out. And he did tag me in this one. But uh, he wrote, I'm considering writing another book, this time on XRP and publishing it on Amazon. XRP community, if you feel this would help drive global adoption, please retweet this. If this tweet receives over 100 retweets, I will begin the outline on Monday. Appreciate your support. So I'm going to go ahead and hit like. I'm going to hit it on, I'll hit it on both these, and I will retweet this right here. And let's go ahead and do a little, like, uh, where's, like, the little metal symbol here? Click on this, and uh, here we go. I got I to gotta pick a nice emoji for this retweet, so I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go with the, uh, oh, where is it? Uh, man, come on. Oh, there we go. That's the one I was looking for. That's, like, the, uh, what do you call that symbol? It's, like, the, it's what you see when... You know, they hold up when you're like rocking out and you're doing your, perhaps you're doing your mosh pitting at a concert or something like that. What do you call that when you got like the pinky and the pointer finger up? Is It's an obvious term and I cannot freaking, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's why I'm using it. Rock on. Let's, let's, uh, let's see it goes. So I'm retweeting that out. And uh, if you guys would like to see a book on XRP as well, I'm going to go ahead and link this tweet below. Feel free if you're on Twitter to retweet it if you care to do so. And it is done. It has been retweeted. All right. Uh, here's a tweet from Kevin Cage, my fellow XRP YouTuber, and he wrote, I wonder what all the XRP haters will say when XRP pops to $5. What do you guys think? And that made me think back to, um, you know, when, when I entered, when I entered cryptocurrency, November of 2017, XRP was around 20 cents or so. That's when I first bought it in November 2017. <laughs> and... At that point, people were saying, they were still saying, XRP will never make it to $1. Never, ever, ever. The Bitcoin maximalist, it's never going to get there. And they've been saying that forever. I mean, there used to be times where they were saying that, or early on, where it would never hit like 
10 cents. You know, like this is the type of stuff that Bitcoin maxis were saying because they did just either they just hate it and they don't care what the truth is or they don't understand the global implications when you're talking about uh, institutional investors coming in, speculators coming in and throwing their money into something based on uh, fundamentals, based on actual utility, things like that, utilization of cryptocurrencies. They just don't get the, the potential uh, multi-trillion dollar asset class that I think is ahead of us. And, and so they're like, no, 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 never 10 cents. And then that pa- passed, well, obviously. Uh, I think that happened for the first time, what, ha- was it May of 2017, maybe? I think it was somewhere around there. And then, of course, as you know, it smashed through a dollar in December of 2017, and by January of 2018, $3.92. And they were wrong. And what I'm telling you is that XRP is being adopted. We're seeing that in a real way. It's not going away. And I do not believe for a moment that three dollars and ninety-two cents for XRP will be the all the all-time high uh, forever. It just—it's not going to be. I just—I don't care what anybody says. I don't believe that. I think that humans are going to value uh, those cryptocurrencies that provide actual utility. Those will have staying power. And so eventually, yeah. Look, it's it, Kevin Cage has a, it's a it's a good thought, time to like get to go through a thought experiment. What will it be like? Because XRP, I believe, not financial advice. I think it will eventually smash through five dollars. I really do. And uh, well, what's everybody going to say then? You know, because you got a lot of people right now, and you've probably seen it if you're engaged in social media. Yeah, oh, XRP, it's never going to hit its all time high ever again. Oh, this and that. That makes no damn sense in the world. XRP is just following Bitcoin. You know, and given that it is still tethered uh, to, to the price of Bitcoin, what the hell do you think is going to happen? Of course it's going to go. <laughs> That's me. Again, I don't have a financial background, not financial advice. That's just what I think. All right, check out this piece from aimbcrypto.com. Bitcoin flies high in the face of Argentina's white flag. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. In the financial world, massive fluctuations owing to the locus of control shifting outwards is common. Political tensions, trade wars, unexpected economic announcements, and even natural calamities have sent market indexes the world over into a frenzy. With analysts mapping a market symptom on one side of the globe to a, a tremor on the other. Earlier this week, one of these historic trimmers struck the traditional market yet again with the premier stock market index in Argentina, the second largest economy in Latin America, dropping by close to half its value following a surprise result in their elections over the past weekend. According to reports, both the national index and the Argentinian peso, ARS, saw massive decline following the August 11th election results. The country's incumbent president, uh, Mauricio Macri, might be mispronouncing that, probably am, uh, performed poorly in Sunday's elections, receiving only 32.1% of the votes, while the center-left candidate, Alberto Fernandez, secured 47.7% of the vote. And I want to use this as an opportunity, and this is not the purpose of this article, but I can spot this. Brad Garlinghouse has talked about this. He's actually specifically cited the volatility of the Argentinian peso in a video that I saw yeah, maybe late 2017, maybe it was early 2018, something like that. And it, it just, it, it, the point that he was making, and it made me, I thought of this instantly when I was reading this, because you're talking about, again, volatility of the Argentinian peso keeps dropping. It loses buying power relative to other fiat currencies the world over. And so if you are a financial institution or a bank and you've got a Nostra account set up and you're leaving your capital dormant just in case you need to move money into Argentina, the prospect of that just became a lot less appealing because the money that you're leaving dormant there, uh, thanks to the crash in the value of the Argentinian peso, your, your money that you put there and parked is substantially less valuable. You are actually losing money in a real way, just lost half its value according to this in this short period of time. Just by having money parked there. There is a better way to do this. XRAPID solves this problem. It's untapped liquidity. You don't need to keep Nostro uh, amounts parked the world over. And it's just in certain countries, it's even more risky. Uh, Obviously, Argentina is one of those countries where you you just know that there can. And this is not like this is the first time there's been news on on the volatility of the Argentinian peso. You just know that this is just given the volatile nature of what's going on over there, this stuff can happen. There's a better way to do it, though. And so I wanted to use that to point it out. Now, another point, and this is a big one that was made within this article, which I think is valid. I'm going to continue to track the degree to which this is true, but I think it's a valid point (laughs) right here. It is well known that in times of turmoil, Bitcoin turns to a global hedge against global risks. 
A recent example of the same was seen during the back-and-forth macroeconomic attacks by the United States and China, which led to a Bitcoin adding over $2,000 to its price. Other examples were also seen during the capital flight into safe haven assets like Bitcoin amidst the Hong Kong protest earlier this year and during the Brexit referendum in June of 2016. In fact, Local Bitcoins, the platform that allows customers to convert their local currency to Bitcoin, saw a premium in the conversion from Argentina peso with the volume rising in terms of the domestic currency, but dipping slightly in terms of actual Bitcoin volume. Economist and cryptocurrency analyst Alex Kruger, however, contends that he expects a sharp rise this week. Similarly, at the time of the Argentine domestic market crash, Buenbet, a Buenos Aires-based Bitcoin exchange, saw Bitcoin trading at over $11,700, while on major exchanges like Coinbase, Bitstamp, Bittrex, and Gemini, the King coin trading was trading at under $11,300. So there was a $400 premium. Think about that. Uh, telling all you need to know about the question of Bitcoin being a hedge. That also creates quite an opportunity for arbitrage if you can move it. Anyway, uh, Further, Matty Greenspan, a senior market analyst at eToro, alluded to the above claims of Bitcoin being a safe haven asset, referencing the Argentinian example as well. He tweeted, here's a tweet from Matty Greenspan, Bitcoin trading higher in Argentina than the rest of the market at local Bitcoins. Lowest offer, 650,000 pesos, which equals $10,790, which is 8% higher than Bitstamp. Highest offer, 770,000 uh, pesos is 28% above Bitstamp. Bitcoin may be a risky asset for investors, but for some, it is clearly a safe haven. Now, again, that's Maddie Greenspan on August 15th, 2019. And, and that's why, you know, in a way we have theorized also, especially, um, and this is somewhat of a different topic, but just the idea of will any cryptocurrency ever, ever be used as money? And uh, the point that I keep making is that, especially as it pertains to the Western world, first world countries, the fiat currencies we're using right now, they're working pretty well. There's no need, there, I, I, like me personally, my in my daily life, I'm in America, I'm in the United States, in the Midwest, using a cryptocurrency would actually be more annoying than using fiat because cryptocurrency is not really accepted in a whole lot of places I shop. There's ways to do it, I just am not really interested in doing it, it would just be a headache for me. And what additional utility would there be for me? What problem would that really be solving? Well, not one for me, really. But in places, this is how cryptocurrencies may, in, th in theory, take hold and actually be used as money one day. It could happen, and it could take decades for this to happen. But in those places where there's the most global turmoil, where you have runaway inflation with fiat currencies, that presents an opening. Because if there's friction there created to a mismanagement uh, from a governmental perspective within a country, yes, that, that there's that friction. It can make sense to utilize a cryptocurrency in that way. And if it's decentralized and you don't have to trust a counterparty, it can make sense. It actually could. And e even if it's not used as money, you can see it today, and here's the point that they're making, and there could be some truth to it, is that it's being used as a hedge against global turmoil, basically. And so we're already starting to see some of that. And so the theory, will humans behave like that? I think there's some reason to think the answer is yes. So we'll see how things unfold over the coming decades. I'm looking forward to following this, but um, those, that's my thoughts on this. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.